Rufty. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Bruce Rain from Braggus Creations. Um, we're definitely going to be going through a few uh, teething problems here because I'm using a new uh, Mac for my live streaming. So I've had to bring all the settings across and some <laughs> are still a little bit, uh, little bit uh, flaky there. So we're just getting all these things sorted out. Um, so that is the main reason why I'm live streaming today is that I have got this new Mac and I want to test it out. How do I make this go away? Uh, okay, there we go. Um, testing a few things, testing a new version of uh, the streaming software that I use, Ecamm Live, and testing this, when I say new, it is a second hand, it is a refurbished, refurbished um, uh, Mac Mini, M1 Mac Mini, so it's a late 2020 model, 3.2 gigahertz, uh, 8 cores, and essentially what was happening is I was using a 2012 Mac Mini, uh, quad core i7, and it was really struggling when I did a live stream with all the different camera inputs and stuff like that. Um, it, if you consider 400% being the maximum amount of CPU, it was using something like 360% or something to do the live streaming. Uh, this one here, it's the Ecamm is using 54%. So 54 versus like 360. Um, and then I, once I get a Bluetooth mouse on here, I think uh, it'll be even quicker because at the moment I'm using one of these USB mice things. And for some unknown reason, I've, had, I've encountered this uh, in, um, on a few computers, I think in Monterey and newer. When I use these sorts of mouses with the little, have the little dongle, it just gobbles up CPU power for some unknown reason. So, anyhow, a quick little hello to everyone. So, uh, hello to Jack68K, hello to Steve from Mac84, uh, hello to Eric Helgeson, uh, PretzelFTW, uh, who else have we got? We've got Ted Grenfell, hello there, and Corbin Dallas, uh, and Max is here. Um, all these midday live streams, some sort of work. Yes, sorry, sorry. Um, this is, a, this is a, as I say, I wouldn't normally be streaming right now. I mean, having said that, I. Theoretically, I should be doing the Mac Yak show at this time, but uh, uh, we had trouble getting everyone together. People had thing, other things on, so we didn't have a Mac Yak show today. Uh, it would have been basically uh, probably me and GT, and that would have been it, and maybe Jay's voice in the background. So that would have been it. Um, Max, I recapped uh, another one of your uh, boards the other day. It was a, a 2SI, and it even worked. It, despite the fact that it had a rather large amount of corrosion on it, uh, it just worked straight off the bat. So I was really pleased. I, had to, I actually had some components fall off it while I was recapping it. Uh, so it was actually a very pleasing thing to have that just work straight off. It's been cleaned now, ultrasonically cleaned. So it's all sparkly now. Uh, how's the brightness, everyone? Do I need to turn that up a bit? I'm just wondering. Brightness? No, probably not. Um, I need to get some better lighting in here one day. Anyhow. Uh, so, top view, let's just see if that works. That looks good, okay. So here is the 2SI after cleaning. Absolutely spotless. A little bit of, little bit of green stuff around here, around the ROMs, and a little bit down here in the corner of the CPU. But it does work. So, very, very happy about that one. Uh, Shady Robot, hello there. Um, so, what we basically have now remaining of yours, Max, I, this is off the top of my head, so it could be wrong. Uh, I have a 2FX here that still needs a little bit of work. I've got to actually get the, um, what do you call that thing? The schematic out and do a little bit of uh, trace checking uh, around where the damage is and find out because I believe that there are some vias in, that have corroded all the way through and those vias are connecting with, board, uh, with uh, layers in the middle. And I've just got to find out what's not making connection. So uh, that is the plan. Um, uh, brightness looks good. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the uh, SE30 board. Now I have actually had this on the show before. This is one that I got from someone. I think I bought it. I think I might have bought it. I don't think I paid much, but I bought it from someone and very badly battery bombed. And then what I did uh, in my, in a live stream was I removed all the components that were going to need replacing. So we've got uh, a few little Bourne resistors here. Um, that are gone, and I'm going to have to find source replacements for those. A little uh, F258, these are the um, uh, RAM MUX chips. I do already have spares for those, so that's okay. 
Um, Real-time clock chip, a couple of diodes down here. Uh, obviously all the capacitors are off. Um, so I am embarking on, let's call it a long-term challenge to get this working. And the motivation I have behind this is that I have recently picked up a couple of Mac SEs. And the beautiful thing about a Mac SE is you can drop an SE30 board into that case and you can turn an SE into an SE30. Just take out the SE board. And so I can, I'm thinking along the lines of maybe turning one of those SEs into an SE30 uh, just for fun. Uh, there are some things missing from that board. So I took a few of them off. Uh, we've got the floating point unit here that has been taken off. Uh, again, these are, are, are available these days. So we'll be able to buy, uh, I'll be able to get a replacement for that. I mean, I, I did whip them all off and put them in a container. Uh, I'm not sure where that container is, but I whipped them all off and put them in a container, I think, somewhere, maybe. And um, some of them might be salvageable, but some of them definitely weren't. Some of them, the legs were literally falling off them. This has been in the ultrasonic cleaner. After removing all those components, I wanted to try and get as much of the corrosion off as I could. Um, and uh, KMAC Vintage, hello there. Um, and so, yeah, so anyhow, um, as I said, I don't really expect this to be a, a wild and woolly uh, live stream. I don't expect it uh, will uh, go for a particularly long time because it is a weekday and I do have work to do. Um, but I just wanted to get started on it. I just thought, you know, let's call this part one. And we'll start having a crack. So um, I think probably the best way to work is, first of all, I mean, there's a lot of very clearly broken traces here. And with those broken traces, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out where they go using the schematic, and then we'll start wiring it up. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So let's get our little uh, uh, microscope here, and we'll start having a look and just seeing how bad this is. Uh, and of course, the answer to that is ultimately bad. Um, oh, um, so uh, I'm just going to... Uh, Enzo, hello there. I know third live stream... Uh, of the week. It's crazy, isn't it? It's just crazy. What's going on with me? Um, just a second. Uh, hang on. Time. There we go. There he is. He's here. Hello, Mano is here. Hello there. You are going to be instrumental in this uh, in this uh, live stream, uh, even if not necessarily in person. You are. I am going to be using your guide um, with all the little. Uh, you've got all that information about what goes where. So uh, you will you will all be forgiven for thinking that uh, this board should just be uh, abandoned. Um, I totally understand that. I, uh, I mean, I think, you know, it probably should, but I'm not gonna. We're just, this is going to be a labor of love. This is going to be something that is just look at every now and again. I mean, the, I was just looking for something to do today on this live stream. I've got plenty of other things to do, but because I got this new, in inverted commas, computer, um, for live streaming, which is, this computer is just handling this so well in terms of the load that it normally puts on uh, on things. Uh, and if there's no lag, it's awesome. Loving it. Uh, all right, let me just do this. Looks white. Traces of traces, they are indeed. So I guess we start from the bottom and work our way up. Um, I am probably going to find, I don't think, I mean, I'm hoping everything is okay underneath this uh, ROM slot. I don't want to have to repair that. Um, looking at this one, I'm inclined to put a new wire for this one here. Because that is just mince. Oh yes, it's got a hell of a patina. And as was observed by Eric earlier on, it's missing just a handful of components, you know, just a few, I mean, oh, you know, this one doesn't have an FPU. Um, right, so, bip. Hmm. 
Once we get into it, it'll feel good. Yeah. Because at the moment, it just look like, looks like, oh my God, what am I doing? Um, so anyhow, this, uh, as I mentioned before, this new Mac that I'm using here for my live streaming is a secondhand or refurbished um, uh, late 2020 M1 Mini. Uh, and I picked this one up uh, recently. Um, I used the spoils of my uh, YouTube channel to pay for it, seeing as it is something that is being used by the YouTube channel. And, uh, and I am hoping that we will be, uh, it will make life a lot easier for us. That is the hope. There we go. How much RAM does it have? This is a base spec one. So this has got eight, eight gigs of RAM and, uh, um, and I dropped something. Oh, anyway. Eight gigs of RAM and uh, 256 gig SSD. Ah, there we go. So this is the this is the base model. But you know the irony is, base model or not, when you go and have a look at the Geekbench results, it still beats my buddy. It beats everything I've got up there, other than the uh, the 2023 Mini that I have. It just you know blows them away in terms of Geekbench results. I know Geekbench isn't everything, but uh, yeah, I mean certainly doing what it needs to do. So what the, this computer needs to do for me here is it needs to uh, be able to handle this streaming software. And I do actually like to have um, uh, Chrome open in the background or Safari open in the background as well with the control panel for, um, uh, you know, for my live stream. And then of course I generally have messages open as well so that Jay can ping me while I'm in the midstream. Um, all right, let's, uh, so with these, the, the SE30 has these, all of these little, um, holes filled with, um, uh, solder. We've got to get that solder out in order to, I mean, we don't have to, but I like to, because when I do a trace repair like this, I like to have the... I like to have the uh, the trace going through to the other side. It just so it feels there's more of a sense of permanency about it. Is that through? I don't know. I don't know. Right now we get our trace repair wire, and uh, I'm glad I have a lot. Boopy doop. Got it through the other side using the cheats method. Just melting the solder for a moment. <laughs> I don't mind using the cheats method because it's me. I still haven't figured out my cable management yet because I, I, I'm still not 100% certain exactly how I'm going to set this rig up, this microscope rig. So uh, I did a, um, a review of this microscope uh, recently. Um, feel free to check it out if you haven't seen it. And this uh, is Vivor Microscope Arm, which I'm really enjoying using. It's just giving me so much freedom in where I can move it. And I know it's a bit more wobbly than the other one because of um, just the, the nature of the way this one works. Um, but the thing I'm not particularly happy with is the way the focus works. And I've got a plan of what I'm going to do with that. Uh, and I might even get a chance to, uh, to try that plan out today. But um, if worse comes to the worst, I may actually try and, you know, get the focus mechanism from my other one and adapt it for this one. Um, I don't want to have to do that, but I might have to do that. But I just love the flexibility this arm gives. Lost all my tweezers. All of them. Every single one. Every single pair of tweezers that I have is now gone. There we go. Here's a pair. There's a pair in there. Uh, do you already check for continuity on the traces? Um, if they look really bad, I am going to repair them even if they give me continuity. Because um, this one in particular, I suspect probably is still providing continuity. 
I suspect. But it looks like a poo, so we have to replace. Some of the ones that kind of look okay, I will probably check just to make sure. <laughs> now, needless to say, while I'm doing these, it's a little bit difficult for me to check the chat as regularly as I might usually. Um, I'll look over. <laughs> I thought the people didn't support a camera. I've got my own head on. Um, so this is, uh, I'll just jump across the side view here for a sec. This is my uh, Amscope head. They all work on exactly the same kind of mounting situation here, where they just have a ring and you just slide it into the ring. They're all the same. So I'm just using the arm from the Vivor with my, um, uh, my, my actual um, microscope head, because this one has the, the camera adapter. Okay, and back to the scope view. Okay, let's get the wire down through this little hole here. Come on. There we go. I, I generally like to do this this sort of work. I like to have two pairs of tweezers. Oh, wow. Uh, because I can then get one pair of tweezers, hold it like this, and another pair of tweezers and sort of bend it into the shape that I want. Like that. Ah. Uh. If anyone is wondering what that sound was that just went by then, did anyone hear that sound? Just curious. Hello, ASM 2750. Um, I have to say, when it comes to a microscope, um, you some of this work you don't need a microscope for, but uh, this sort of work I'd say you do. But even with the stuff you don't need, technically need a microscope, you could do it with the nude eye. Um, uh, the, that incredible noise that went by, that was actually the sound of a flock of sulfur-crested cockatoos. So that's the sound they make. The sweet and dulcet tones of sulfur-crested cockatoos in a flock as they go by. It is one of the most incredibly loud sounds you've ever heard. This wire doesn't have to be actually soldered down along the whole way, but I prefer that it has at least a few contact points here. It just means it's going to be neater. Um, yeah, I could actually feel bits of trace coming up there. Definitely a good idea to replace this one or repair it. I did a trace repair video a while ago, long, many years ago, and I actually, there were a lot of people that got really up in arms about me using the word repair. So like, you didn't repair the trace, you replaced it. And it's like, yeah, well, I suppose technically you're right, I didn't repair the trace. I repaired the circuit. Yes, I mean, I imagine a pterodactyl might have sounded something like a self crusty cockatoo. I can't be certain about that, though. 
Okay. Well, that is our first of 50 gazillion trace repairs. The things we do for SE30s, eh? Don't you know? Do, 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 do. And we have to, of course, hope that that via is still intact enough inside that it's going to where it needs to go. Because as you can see, this doesn't actually go to the other side of the board. This goes somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, it's a join between somewhere and somewhere. I guess what we could do is we could do a little bit of a flickety flick type uh, continuity test. Oh. <laughs> crazy, crazy legs. <laughs> All right. So I can put my little beepity beep there and then I'm just going to scan it across the ROM. Yeah, okay. There it is. Okay. Now, this is something that I did with the last SE30 board that I worked on and it's a very good idea to do. Um, you've basically got a ROM sim here and you have got whole bunch of pins and what I am going to do here is I'm going to go so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 40. If I get to the end of this and then someone says, uh, no, the SE30 is a six layer PCB, unfortunately, unfortunately for us. Generally the four layer ones are so much easier because the inner layers are usually just VCC and um, ground. So if you're running into strife, like you might have a break in a veer or something like that, all you have to do is where there is a break, you just find somewhere to steal a little bit of voltage from. You can run a little trace to virtually anywhere on the board where there's VCC or anywhere on the board where there's ground. And so it's really, really easy to do repairs to those. You don't have to run great big lengthy wires. But this has actually got data layers inside here. Um, and this is basically because this was, I believe, is it, it's at the... 2CX or the 2X? It's, I think it's either the 2CX or the 2X. It's virtually that board, that board that then has been compressed down into the small form factor. In order for them to do that at the time, they had turned this into a six layer board. Now, interestingly enough, uh, this board has been recreated by Boll, but when Boll did it, he didn't actually try and do a trace for trace, layer for layer reproduction. What he did is he recreated it with things in the correct vicinity of where they should be on the board. This is where you should have your ROM sim, this is where you should have your RAM, all that sort of stuff. He had um, he did that, uh, but he was able to re-engineer it using modern technology and whatnot, modern sort of manufacturing techniques. He was able to re-engineer it into a four-layer board. So apparently Boll took this as from a six-layer board and converted it into a four-layer board. Can the Grosjean get, get into the inner trace layers? It can but it's more likely to just break a link to a VIA. So, um, so the last one of these that I worked on with severe battery damage, um, because of the proximity of the battery damage, it really impacts on the traces, mainly the ones coming from, to, going to, to and from the ROM and the RAM, that sort of thing, that, those sorts of links there. Um, and so, you know, a lot of that is just, that's why I'm going through and marking out these dots on the ROM sim, because a lot of this is going to be about um, tracing things through, you know, actually getting the multimeter out, doing it the whole, the whole boring way. 
but just making it so that we have all these connections restored. Um, I mentioned before, Elemeno, who is in the chat, he has started working on it. I hope he, I hope, you know, if you know, if you need anything from me, Elemeno, let me know. But I am hoping that this will become sort of available to the public in the not too distant future because it is brilliant. One of the most fantastic things, and this is something you can access now if you're working on an SE30, the he redid the uh, schematic, completely ground up, redrew the schematic. I've got a copy of it here. Um, and what's fantastic about it is he added something to it that wasn't in the original schematic. And that is he added, I think some pages might have fallen off this. Oopsie. Yeah, I think some pages have fallen off. Uh, he added uh, a little chart that shows um, all of the traces from the ROM to, uh, to where they go. And so you can literally go in and, and just ping out each pin of the ROM uh, to back to where it's supposed to go and find any breaks. So it's very handy. I uh, need to get one of those SE30 related boards. I have an SE30 that has quite a lot of trace damage and I don't want to have that many bodge wires. Oh, come on, why not? What's wrong with a bodge wire? Um, the main thing I'm missing is photos. Okay, so what photos do you need? Just let me know because if I can get photos, um, I could. Get, I probably should stop working on this and take a photo of this, shouldn't I? Um, just to show how bad it is when... Uh, when things get battery bombed. Uh, okay, well that was 40, I think, was it? I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. Does that sound right? So that'd be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 64 pins. Does that sound right? 64 pins sound right? Before and after recap and a few other things noted in the draft. Okay, I'll need to check that out. Uh, God. I am, yeah, okay. So, I am sure I've got some, I've got, I have gone in and have a look at some of my photos. And one of the really annoying things is, I've got a couple of really close up photos of very bad corrosion on an SE30, but I don't have a complete photo of that board before I took the, um, the, uh, the what do you call it, the um, caps off. I might though. But anyhow, I'll check. I'll go back to the draft. I'll have a look. Uh, and in the meantime, I'll see if I can find these missing pages. Uh, I believe they may have fallen down here. We won't be needing any of this today. We shan't be needing any of this today because we're not recapping today. Ugh. Oh, falling down. Oh. What's that miscellaneous? Got lots of containers labeled miscellaneous. I really should come up with a system. All right, sorry if my noise goes, sound goes a bit bad. I, I've, I can see the papers on, oh. Is that maybe one of the papers I need? Oh, it is, this is the important one too. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I've been rolling over it in my chair. It's an absolute mess. Um, I might have to get, I'm gonna to have to get the file off the computer, so just bear with me a second while I grab it on the screen. Uh, Colin, hello there. Uh, what's the difference between bodge wire and what Bruce, I am doing bodge wire. This is bodge wire. This is classic bodge wire work. Okay, so I'll have a look. The draft, I've got the draft down there. Uh, I can grab it, but if I bend over, I'll probably be showing plumber's crack, and I don't want to do that. So uh, let's go to the website. So this is SE30 schematic. Oop. And there it is. Actually, I've got it on my, I don't need to go to the website. I've got it on my computer. What am I talking about? Egypt. I have it here in a little section of my computer called Mac Technical Files. There it is. And then inside that, I have a section for uh, Macintosh 68K schematics. And in that, I have a file with a PDF, the one that I'm after, 
and we're looking for page 10. That's the address lines. And we've got the data line pin matrix. So we've got the address line pin matrix. So what we are going to look for here is... Doo -doo -doo. Sorry about this, folks. I'm getting myself organised and sorted, and then I shall check on the chat. Just bear with me. Yeah, there are 64, so I did count correctly. Right, now... What we found, we found a beep. Let's go and find him. So let's find where that beep was coming from. Oh no, he beeped. Thumbs up to Jay's good news. Let's get rid of that. And let's go back to this cam thing. There we go. What's the difference between a budgie smuggler and a speedo? There is no difference. I suppose the gender of the person wearing it. <laughs> All right. So we've established that this little connection here, the one that I just did a little trace repair to, is up here somewhere. There it is. Okay, so that is... 10, 20, sorry, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is 54. Let's have a look at our little matrix. Matrix. With Keanu Reeves. What a good film that was. I enjoyed that film immensely. Uh, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, there we go, okay, ROM, it doesn't go to 54, ROM, 54, here we are, so that's a data line, and he needs to go to D19 diode, is that right, is that what the matrix says, no, S1B RAM, S3A RAM, oh, uh, hang on, S3B RAM, uh, N5 CPU, this goes everywhere, I say, I say to you. Well, let's start by just checking to see if he goes to the CPU, what's N, N5, what's N5, why is it N5, oh, of course, this is, I can't check the CPU, no way, Jose, too hard, uh, FPU, I can check it at the FPU by the looks of it. This is all going to be very complicated, isn't it? Okay, so 54. Let's see if it goes anywhere on the FPU. Well, checking the FPU is going to be fun. Look at that. What a mess. So 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 54. Yeah, oh, look at that. It goes to the FPU. So I think what we can say with a fair degree of safety is that the um, the VR is intact. So I think we're fine with that one. So feeling good about 54. I should be marking these off, shouldn't I? But I'm not because I haven't got a printout because I rolled all over the printout with my chair and now it's absolutely unreadable. Okay. Back to the live. Back to the show. Back to the shoe. I've actually got someone who is going to give me an Apple II GS. Isn't that nice? I was talking to them the other day and they were saying that they picked up a bunch of 2GSs as part of a bulk lot and they had zero interest in the 2GS. And so I said, well, I'll have one if you don't, if you, if you want. And they said, sure, you can have one. Looks sweet. Sweet. Um, the 2GS has a fascination for me because I, even though I never actually used one, um, it was something that I lusted after when they were available. Having, you know, they just looked so slick to me. Cute. All right, look at this little monster. I'll find out where this is going. Tech Doc, hello there. Uh, 
going, what did I miss? John, you missed everything. Uh, you didn't miss much, actually. I'm working on an SE30 here. This is one that I, I either paid for or got for free. I can't remember. I might have got it as part of a lot. Um, so sometimes people give me stuff in return for recapping their boards. So they might say, here's a bunch of junk for recapping your boards. And I go, yeah, no worries. And then I, I kind of assess a value and I sort of be like, yeah, okay, so I'm going to offset X amount of dollars from the recapping. And sometimes it pays for the whole recapping. Um, but, um, but yeah, this I'm pretty sure I got as part of some others, some other bits. Nice busted trace there. Okay, so we've got to go here. We've got to scrape. I'll get a new scalpel. Get a new blade. Change the blade. Shave away my sorrow. Uh, to, do two GS have capacitor problems too? No idea. Someone else might be able to answer that. I've I have literally not used one. I've, I've seen pictures of them and stuff, but I've not used one since they were around, since they were actually something you could buy. When we scrape like this and we reveal the copper, of course, it makes the brakes stand out really, really well. Um, Gonna take the serial number off. I want access to under it. Bye bye barcode. No number on it. How about that? Little tiny number there. Uh, this is the later version of the SE30, by the way. I should mention this is the one that has the uh, chip not in a socket. It's actually soldered straight onto the board. There we go. So who here, who here in the chat is a Mac user in terms of daily driver sort of thing, you know, what they use as the, their main computer? Who here is actually using a Mac for that? Just curious. I think we can fairly safely say Elemento is a yes. Okay. Yes, uh, Jay has a great story to tell about that in that he, uh, in his job, they sent him a computer to use and they sent him a PC and then he used that for a while and then he got a little bit cocky and went back to them and said, hey, any chance I can get a Mac instead? And they did. They sent him a Mac. They obviously like him. Don't know why. So we're doing two things here by uh, do, doing this like kind of rubbing of these traces. I am um, coating them with some solder, which will help uh, protect them, uh, protect them from um, further corrosion. Uh, but what it also does is it really makes the gaps in the traces stand out. So let me check. M2 during the day and 68K at night. <laughs> Not a lot of web browsing at night then, eh? <laughs>
Homework, homework, and everywhere else, Mac. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I have to say that I ha every now and again have to fire up um, uh, Windows uh, in parallels because there are times when I'm working on web stuff. I'm, I'm a web developer by day, and there's time when I'm working on web stuff, and I might just need to check and see how it behaves on um, uh, uh, on what's it called Edge. Um, and the other thing I do is I've got one client. Uh, and they have their database as an MS, you know, Microsoft SQL Server. I get so frustrated when they just go, SQL. I go, no, 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 MS SQL. No, no, no. You aren't the only SQL out there. You are MS SQL, not just SQL. So back off, man. Um, so, um, yeah. Yeah. Bear with me a second. I believe I am about to get a visit, so I'm just going to do the old back zoom thingy. Okay, there we go. Um, but I will always be, just finishing off what I was saying there before, I will always be using a Mac as my computer of choice. And, you know, there are all sorts of arguments you could make for that. But at the end of the day, it's just the operating system that I'd like to use. It's what I'm used to. Um, I am now my two main Macs. Uh, well, I suppose I've got three main Macs. I've got laptop, I've got streaming computer, and then I've got my, my daily driver. My daily driver is now an M2. It's the M2 Avic Ultra. It's the uh, 2023 Mini. Um, I still feel like Ventura has some teething problems, and I still feel like the hardware has some teething problems. I've been having lots of issues with the I/O on that computer, uh, drives just dropping off and things like that. Um, and I've got a few bugs in Ventura as well, ones that very you know very clear bugs, and I'm I'm hoping they'll get those sorted out. I can't run Monterey on that computer because of its age, so I have to run Ventura. Um, but um, but basically, I just like working with the operating system. And of course, for a lot of people these days in their jobs, you can use either. So much stuff is web-based. You can use whichever computer you're most productive on, really. Uh, you make a very good point there, ASM2750. It, it, it is, there are a lot of frustrating things about the, um, the model now. We, we understand why um, upgradability is, is, is changing because the way they have created the new uh, Apple Silicon chips, part of what makes them as fast as they are is having everything kind of wired in rather than being upgradable. Um, and that's 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 a double-edged sword, you know. It gives you great performance. Uh, it, you know, really good, you know, sort of power consumption, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but the downside is you can't upgrade it. And I totally, I totally get that. Um, you know, things like being able to use a replaceable batteries on laptops. See, for me, that's a big thing. I, I sort of feel like when you look at the MacBook Pro up until... I guess it was probably the Retina ones, where you could unscrew the bottom. Uh, you only needed a reasonable amount of technical ability to swap a battery over inside those things. Yes, the wrong person could go in and damage it. I get that. But only a reasonable amount of um, technical ability, and you could just replace the battery by yourself. Uh, it's a very different story these days. I love the iMac Pro. I really hope they do an Apple Silicon version or at least a larger Mac, iMac. Um, I'll be fine the Mac Studio, but I'll just be waiting to see how everything shakes out. Yeah, well, we know there are some new Macs on the way because uh, it was an article the other day. They found a few more of those model codes, you know, 14,8 and 14,13 or something like that. I can't remember the exact codes, but they, they found some codes floating around somewhere. That, so they know that these Macs are coming out, but we're just not sure what they are. There are a few theories as to what they are likely to be, but I don't think we know just yet. Um, right, continue work, continue work. Stop getting distracted, Mr. Rain.
I'm going to put a modicum of flux on here. It's not a modicum at all, it's a bucket load. This is like about two Rossmans worth. There we go. Doing what I'm doing at the moment is going to destroy some of these traces, I know that. This level of rubbing, I know is going to break things. But, you know, we're in a repairing mood anyway, so we may as well break them first. Tazzy Bob, hello. I stopped being a Mac user when they started soldering storage and RAM onto the board, so not at greater work will give me whatever I saw, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, look, Apple have been on the quest for thin and sleek and little for a very long time now. Um, and I think they kind of have taken it too far for my preference. But we do have to remember there are a lot of people out there that just don't care about that. Um, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not fussed. I mean, you know, I, I like the idea of being able to get hold of a Mac and then you know, grab a couple of RAM sims and upgrade it, you know, bring it up to its maximum or whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's this quest for thinness. And, and of course, I, I'm, not, I'm not drawn in by that. Uh, one of my favourite Macs is still my 17-inch MacBook Pro from, I think, 2010. That thing weighs a tonne. But I love the thing. I love using it. I love that great big screen and... You know, it's pretty solid aluminium case. I mean, they're a lot harder to break than the new ones. These days, the, the new Macs, they're making them so painfully thin. Uh, if you put a coin on the keyboard and then close the lid, you're going to smash the screen. Um, but uh, I use a Mac Mini, but it's running Linux. I also have a Mac Mini running Linux. I've got a 2014 Mini. It's the really crappy one that they brought out, the one that's like, um, I don't know, it's slow as. But anyhow, I've got that running um, uh, Linux and uh, it's being used as a web server and it runs beautifully. It has stuff all RAM in it, of course it's not upgradable. Um, and uh, it, yeah, it's, it's beaut as a web server. It's fantastic. Oh, it's, it copes with it, whatever I throw at it. I mean, if I throw really hardcore, difficult PHP scripts at it, just choose through it, no, no issue at all. Um, I am not one of the Mac Pro sellouts 2021 classic Mac Pro all the way. Well, it will please you, Jay, that I do still have that one. Um, um, say hello, shall we, will we say hello to the chickens? Hello, chickens. Oh, geez, that camera needs to clean, doesn't it? Um, yeah, um, I, it will please you that my classic Mac Pro is still being, my 2012 one is still being utilized in a big way. It's still uh, set up. Uh, for my security camera, it's still set up for my Plex server, and various other bits and pieces, so, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, so it's still still definitely uh, working for me. Um, so now, one of the things I did want to ask here very, very quickly is th that we do have a few of these Mac users here. Uh, what's one of my scope view? I need scope view. Where's that? That's this one. We do have a few Mac users here. I'm just curious about gaming on the Mac. See, I don't really play games on the Mac. I don't really play games, period. Uh, but I'm just curious about what sort of games are available on the Mac, you know. Um, and do they all have to run through Steam these days? Or are there any that just work on their own? Um, you know, because I'm just curious. Now that I have this, you know, 2023 Mac M2 thing, you know, I'd, I wouldn't mind just maybe having a game on there that, kind of utilizes the graphics and I can see frame rates and all that sort of stuff. Not Fortnite. I'm not going to do Fortnite. Sorry. Refuse to do Fortnite. And preferably a game that doesn't have in-app purchases. I don't like games that have in-app purchases i like games that are just the whole you buy the whole the whole thing like we did in the music the olden days oh and i've got zero interest in multiplayer as well i just want to play games by messiah so i guess that rules out things like minecraft and stuff like that Oh, 
Okay, well, I think I've got enough trace coating here for at least to move on to a few more trace repairs. Uh, Tic-tac-toe, yeah, it's a great game. Uh, Unreal Tournament, if your Mac can't run at the <laughs> Mac or its OS sucks. Uh, straight apostrophe in there, Jay. Just don't want to, sorry to correct you, but if you're going to give me grief about Unreal Tournament, I'm going to correct you and tell you your apostrophe should not, not be there on its. Um, bought a $4,000 gaming laptop a couple months ago, and all I have done with it so far is what you do. <laughs> um, hello, Sibyliastics. Hello, my Bondi Blue iMac ran Unreal Tournament with the Voodoo 2 card. Um, isn't Othello a game? A Mac game? Possibly, yes. Um, one of the things that I absolutely adore, and if you do have an M1, or if you have an Apple Silicon Mac, just do investigate this. You can now run on it the original Doom and Doom 2 in native Apple Silicon so mode. So there's that. And then there is also uh, Duke Nukem 3D. You can run that natively on Apple Silicon. And I've got to tell you, it is quite the experience in terms of like frame rates and stuff like that. Full screen, you know, um, and uh, plays beautifully. And I love those old games. I really do. Um, I generally play them all with the cheats on because that's just how I am. Um, I don't really like the challenge of the game. I just like the adventure. So sue me. Doom runs on everything, as it should. That's the way of the world, let's face it. Um, right, okay. So let's start looking at some of these really, really bad ones here. And seeing if we can get them all looking not so bad. I'm being very lucky with getting the solder out of these holes. A lot of the time it's a real pain in the backside, but they've actually been coming out quite easily today. Must be my lucky day, my lottery ticket. Because the moment you say that, you get stuck. Come on. There we go. Okay. There's a setting I can do to stop the transparencies on this iOS, isn't there? It's an accessibility. Uh, what is it? Display. Reduce transparency. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, that's so much better. This software, the way they've designed it, they've designed all of the windows as having um, like transparency and there's no control for it. You can't set what that transparency is. So it's just easier to switch it off because when I'm reading the chat, it's white text on this transparent background. If I put a white box behind it, it's white on white. I can't see anything. Um, so just to anyone here who has... Uh, all the games I run through Steam also work on Mac and Linux. Yeah. So Steam just seems to be the thing now, doesn't it? I and mean, that's the impression I get from everyone is if you're going to play a game, it's going to run through Steam. Uh-oh. Jay's just sent me a movie. He sent me a movie. I can't watch it now, can I? Mm. He'll be very happy now. He's just, he realised that I don't have Do Not Disturb on. Maybe I should switch it on. I don't even know how to do that now in this OS. How do I switch it on? Here we go. There we go. Focus. It's called Focus now. Do not disturb. There we go. Focus is on. All right. Let's uh, let's do what I said I was going to do and repair some traces. So this one here kind of bothers me a little bit the way this via looks. So we might just check and see that that one is getting through to the other side. So that is the left one on the row of four. So it will be the right one on the other side. Well, that's not a row of four, it's a row of five. 
No, that's a row of four. Left one on a row of four. Hmm, look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's that one there, I think. Isn't that it? Or is it this one? Oh, there's rows of four everywhere. Vex me. Using USB power. Okay, no worries. So let me just show you something really quickly uh, here. Uh, Todus, is it Todus? Is that how I'm supposed to say it? Or is the S silent? Todai. Um, I've got a Mac Plus board here. I think it works. Or it's used to work or it has some missing bits or something. I don't know. <sighs> got a bit of cockroach pill on it today, but that's another story. Uh, oh, I took the sound chip off this one by the look of it. Oh, and the real-time clock chip. I've got a spare real-time clock chip. Anywho, um, so just very quickly, going to show you this right now. Top view. You will find information about this on the interwebs if you do a little bit of a search. But this is a Mac Plus board um, with, as I say, a couple of missing components, but that's all right. Um, and what you have here is the SCSI port. Now, just here, you'll see a little thing that says CR1. Let's just cross across the microscope now. And I'll show that to you. Skill view, skill view, skill view. Uh, if we go here, you will see CR1. Now, you can, oh, kill. Let me just lift this up a bit. Yeah. You can get a diode, place it on that CR1 spot. Whoopsie, let's go that way. You can put a diode on that. Let's get it in focus. There we go. There we go. You're going to put a diode on that, and what that will do is that will then provide termination power to the SCSI port, and that will allow you to power the Zulu SCSI from the, the actual board rather than uh, from the USB. So, um, with the S, TOTUS, okay. So, uh, so anyhow, that's something, you, look, you don't have to do it or anything like that, but it's something you can do if you want to. You basically just need to get the solder out of those holes, then put a little diode down there. And I can't remember which diode you use, but it's, it's, it's pretty flexible. I, I know it's a diode that I keep here. I've got it in stock, floating around somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, wow, what is in that? What's in this bag? Look at all these RAM slots. Look at all these RAM slots. Now, they look used, but I obviously just whipped them off some things and kept them. That's handy to have. Yeah, cool. Useless on this computer, because this one's got the slanty ones. You can buy the slanty ones, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyhow, it's the information. There we go. Um, LMNO comes forward with the goods. Let's say... 1N4143. It's actually quite flexible as to which diode you put on there, but um, I know that there people have talked about all different diodes they've put on there and it all works the same. But uh, yeah, so if you grab one, and they're very readily available, I mean, I can, I can pick up those diodes just at the, um, the, the store. So uh, uh, just up the road, where I may even end up going later today, because I'm, number one, I need some exercise, gotta go for a walk. Uh, and number two, I need to get some Cat6 uh, cable in order to wire up my wife's office because she's been running on Wi-Fi. And can't be had. One N4001, there you go. Made some unpleasant noises last time I used it, so the analog board might need some attention first. Yeah, uh, look, the Plus analog board, uh, its main failing areas are typical... Look, Every time these get a year older, they're all always new new problems that they can potentially develop. But with most of the pluses I've found, usually the problems are usually related to either resistors or diodes. Um, not so much capacitors, but, you know... Sorry, going to wobble again. There we go. Right, so what we want to do is I want to check this one here. Well, let's find out where it goes first, and then that will give us a clue. It goes along here, down here. Oh, it goes to here. Is that right? Are you right there? Are you right? Nope. Oh, multimeter will be off now because it's been sitting here for donkey's years. Here's one of the downsides. This I'm using the fluke for this. 
It is one of the downsides of the Fluke in that it uh, um, it doesn't beep when it's auto powering off. I know that Steve hates it when his bips at him when it's auto powering off, but it's actually handy to have because the Fluke sometimes switches itself off. You know, they're going to test and all of a sudden it's not it's not doing anything. All right, so that one there is going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's going to pin 10 of UJ2. Once again, pin 10 of UJ2. Going to look at the diagram. UJ, 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 UJ2. Pin 10, that is pin 6 of the ROM. Uh, so the ROM is, yeah, pin 6 of the ROM. So let's just check and see if that's getting uh, a connection there. So we've got... One, two, three, four, five, six, pin six, and then we'll go here to 10. Well, great. So that one is intact. We don't need to do a trace repair for that one. So isn't that good? One that we don't have to do. Uh, but we're certainly going to have to do, well, not certainly, maybe going to have to do the next one. But this one doesn't look too crash hot either. And that one is going to, oh, oh, that one's going down into another hole. Oi. The bird noises in the background, that is, they are noisy miners, Australian miners. Um, they make a bit of noise. The initiator mode on the Zulu is very cool. I'm not even sure what that is, so. Um, do, 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 do. <clears throat> I have to do some interesting things in this uh, in this live stream at some stage because uh, uh, if I'm going to could turn this into a multi-part series, I might have to do a summary at the end. So I have to cut out all the interesting bits. So I have to, you know, I have to cut together all the interesting bits. So I have to do interesting things at some stage. Oh, yep, oop, 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 oop. There it is. So that is twenty. One, two, 23. So let's go and look at our little chart again. This will be so much easier when I have this printed out. 23. <coughs> ROM 23 is going to... We're going to check him on the... Um, what do you call it? This is another one that is going to the FPU. So if I can see that he's getting all the way to the FPU, I'll consider that that is probably joined up. He also goes to the CPU, but we'll, we'll see. Okay, so that's 20, 1, 2, 3, 23E. And that was this one. And then let's just do a little bit of a scan and hope. Okay. Well, we're getting all the way up to the FPU, so I, again, I consider that we're probably all fine on the inner layer. So I think we're good with that one as well. So, jolly good, jolly good. It's all interesting. Oh, yes, of course it is. <laughs> Don't patronize me. <laughs> uh, dear, oh, dear. All right, so uh, this one could be interesting, but this will be fun. This will be fun. This is when it all starts to get exciting, like edgier seat type excitement stuff. I plugged it directly into an external SCSI hard drive, powered it up, and it made an image of the hard drive on the SD card. I didn't even know it could friggin' do that. Directly into an external SCSI hard drive. Sus. That is incredible. That is a really nifty feature. I should learn more about these sorts of features of things that I sell. All right, where does this go to? Yeah, so this is just a, this is where we start to get interesting because we've actually got this via 
is Well, we've still got some copper there, so we may be able to make a connection with the bottom here. But we also may end up having to run a humongously long trace to some other location on the board. We'll just wait and see. Okay, so I've got a really large amount of wire here, just in case. Okay, so he's going down to there. So I probably don't need to run him all the way. A little bit of focus, 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 focus. Oh, there goes some solder wick. I just want enough of this placed down so that I can feel pretty confident about it, you know, not going anywhere. There we go. That looks nice. Now, I think I, I, I think I warned people right at the beginning of this, but I probably should warn people now who might have just sort of jumped in later on. This is a multi-stage project, so don't expect this to be uh, resolved or tested today. Uh, not only am I missing a stack of components, uh, I have most of them. Uh, I do need to order, I probably need to order an FPU. I don't think I have an FPU in stock, or as we say in Australia, FPU. Um, and I... Um, and I don't have the Bourne's resistors either. Uh, if anyone's feeling energetic and they've got access to the interwebs, uh, what have we got here? These are 220, so what does that mean? They're probably like 22 ohms or something. These are 4816, no, 48, 481, it's either a 6 or a G, but I think it's a 6, 4816P-001. Dash two twenty, and then there's a what one th one three or is it a B? I don't know. Nine o three o. So these are these little resistor nets, and I need I need to replace. I'm assuming they're all the same, but I need to to replace RP four, RP nine, RP eight, and RP seven on this board. And then I've also got I don't even know what's at LS thirty. What is LS30? I have to look that up. Because he's a, he's a goner. Look at him. He's a goner. Uh, this one, this battery damage is a lot worse than some of the other ones I've seen. It's it's leaked upwards, and maybe the way the computer was stored, but it's leaked right up into this section here. And the last one I worked on, it didn't go that far. It was more centered on the lo lower section. Ah oh, dear. How many parts do you think it will take? To, uh, to replace this. Well, I need, there are, I've got the, the crystal I already have, so that's the clock crystal. The real-time clock I already have, two diodes I already have, the caps, of course. Uh, I've got one, two, three F25s, eight, F258s, I've already got them. I've got uh, RP4, RP8, RP9, RP7. I, I, they all need to be replaced. The floating point unit needs to be replaced, and this LS30. I don't even know if I have an LS30. Oh, and of course these ones here as well. We've got um, F393, I've got one of those. LS166, I've got those. And F253, I've got those. So I've got, I've got a lot of these parts that are missing. <clears throat> it's really only an, an LS30, um, which I don't think I have, but I'll need to check. So I need to get an LS30, and I need to get these resistors and a floating point unit. Definitely seen better days. Yes, it has. Part one of, oh, who knows? Who knows? Be wonderful if I do actually get it working though. That'll be a very rewarding thing. All right, let's find out where this one that I've just repaired goes. So I'm gonna use the same method that I was using before, and that is, I'll just get my uh, trusty little multimeter. I will place one little, um, uh, what do you call those things? 
um, probe um, onto that, and then the other one I'll just run up and down the ROM slot. Okay, so that is four, number four. And I'm pretty sure if I remember rightly, four is part of the uh, address line. So let's, yep, it is address lines. That's going to UJ2, pins three and six. And it's also going to other places. It goes to the CPU, it goes to sound chip, it goes to PDS slot, uh, so, and things. So let's just start off by checking four against pin three of UJ2. So we've got UJ2 lives here, pin three, let's go to there. Yeah, so I've got a nice connection going to there, but we do know that it also goes to other places on the board and we're gonna to need to check those. So I'm just gonna check one of the others. Let's say pin eight of the video ROM. I think we can safely say if, if we get to which is the video ROM? The video ROM UK6. UK6, okay, so pin, is it, that's one, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pin eight, two, yep. All right, so that's good. So we've actually been able to establish a connection there. So um, let's, let's dance and rejoice. There is also a connection going to the um, PDS slot, so I can check that relatively easily by just sticking one probe right here, and then just running this up and down the... Uh, always the last one you try, isn't it? There it is. Okay. So it's an ex we've got the connection there going to the uh, PDS slot. So that's a good one as well. So that one was, again, one of the easier ones. So the next one, perhaps not so easy, but we'll see. <sighs> I need to get back to uh, my software here. Here we go. Oh, whoopsie. Cable came undone. Testing, testing, one, two, three. That was weird, wasn't it? I wonder what happened there. No, it's just like when the c connection to this camera went, it uh, changed my microphone, so who knows? Maybe this is part of the, uh, all of the I.O. issues that I have been having on uh, Apple Silicon. Sorry about that, folks. You'll be pleased to know that I didn't actually say anything particularly interesting during that time. So don't feel like you're missing out. I, uh, I kept the conversation during that time I was off very, very pedestrian, very dull. Okay, another trace repair. Uh, Jay, I still get your messages on my watch, so you can still message me. 
Okay, so that's we know that those four are good, so we're uh, we're we're good to go with those. That's happy joy, happy happy joy, joy. I think, or, or we did not test this one. I don't think we tested this one yet. So I think we tested the last one. I'll check. I mean, I am getting older. My brain is fraying at the edges. So I'll just check and make sure that this wasn't the one I was just testing. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, I've got to sort out this focus. Yeah, this is definitely a new one. So let's check and see what we can find out from this one. There's got one probey there. And... Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. One, two, three, four, five, 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 five. So back to our little little thingy here that five is going to UJ two, two and five. So UJ two, number two. That's a good connection there. And then let's check him at the uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh, Video ROM, see if he's getting there. Uh, these pin seven. So, one, two, three, four, five. And then we go across here to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yay! Okay, so we know that one's good as well. So we're making connections on the inside of the board. Uh, couldn't be bothered to alert you. Yep, fair enough. Um... <clears throat> I'm just trying to remember if I did say anything interesting. Oh, okay. So what I was saying while I had no sound on, that I was just going to mention that there are um, a few things here that we don't need to worry about fixing up in order just to test it. I don't need to worry about putting these diodes in place because they're just part of the battery backup. We can test without that. Uh, I can actually test without... Um, the capacitors on uh, but I won't get sound and I kind of want sound because I can tell if I'm getting a chime or a sad back chime or whatever the case may be but we'll definitely need to replace that and we'll need to replace that and of course anything related to the RAM here as well all these little these little resistors and stuff I mean I could theoretically steal them from my um, uh, from my other SC just for the purposes of getting it going and I may even end up doing that if I get to that stage we'll just see what happens um, it's easy enough to just whip them off and then whip them on again. Uh, right. It'd be interesting. Imagine if I sell this. Imagine if I'm, I sell this uh, this computer to someone and they like they open it up and find all these bodge wires all over it. I would tell. I would never not tell people if I was selling this. I would say this has been repaired by one of the finest in the country. <clears throat> uh. Someone could try and argue that. Finest what though? That's the question. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's pin six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that goes to pins ten and thirteen of UJ2. That's UJ2 again there. Uh, 10, 13, 10, 13, so we're all good. And then he also goes to oh, the video ROM pin six. One, two, three, four, five, six, good. Okay, so that one's a good connection. Uh, so we don't need to worry about that one. Whoopsie, that's this guy here. But no such luck on this one here. That looks like that video has rotted all the way through. Oh, the humanity. We haven't had to do one of those real wandering all the way across the board repairs, so maybe this will be our first. Javier should have that board back by now. He should have, I think. Um, it's been a couple of weeks. I must get in touch with him. So for anyone who 
missed that one. That was a SE30 repair that I did. Um, the board actually came from Joe and then it sat in Ballina for a year. Long story there, but it did have a lot to do with COVID. Um, and then essentially that person at Ballina was going to come and visit me, but then COVID happened and they didn't. And with the benefit of hindsight, I should have just got her to stick it in a box and send it to me. But uh, yeah, that's not what happened. Do, do, do. Let's get some solar on this. I'm, I'm going to probably set myself a time limit on this as to maybe about probably two hours today, I would say. Um, just setting expectations up front. I do have some other things that I need to do. Uh, they're things that I don't enjoy doing, which is one of the main reasons why I'm doing this. But they still have to be done anyway. Oh, this takes some concentration. I need to use the double tweezers for this bit. That's enough. That's enough. Uh, I often get grief from people um, who watch my videos uh, about what I just did then. Slicing downwards um, with my scalpel to cut a little bit of wire off because they're like, oh, you're breaking the trace, you're breaking the trace. But I won't break the trace, just letting you know. Okay, let's see what this looks like on the other side of the board. Do we have any of this via intact? Answer, no. I probably should have had a little bit more, shouldn't I? Because I'm probably going to need to put this somewhere around the board. So I probably just wasted my time then um, with what I just did. But anyhow, that'll be fun. That will be fun. So let's trace where this one goes. Uh, this one goes... Oh, 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 oh. This one goes. Bzzz, oh, I, I jumped. Bzzz, and zzz. Okay, so this is UJ2, and we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Pin 11 of UJ2. So where's he supposed to go? Uh, UJ2, pin 11, he's meant to go to pin 7 of the ROM. So, sorry, let's have a look. Let's get a multimeter, and we'll go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And check. That's a big, oh, the thing's off again. Nothing. Nothing. So, yes, I'm going to have to do that one again. I'm going to take the trace off. Everyone, I want you to all come forward with insults um, for doing what I just did, uh, which is clearly wrong. Nice, neat trace repair. Sure. Sure, why not? But I didn't give myself enough wire on the other side. And I do want to do this in one piece and not in pieces. So let's get this side done first. So what we need to do is we need to get to pin seven, which is this way. So they go like this. This is the way they're numbered. They go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's that guy there. Just got a little stab there so I, I don't lose it. Then we're gonna get this wire 
and connect it to that here like that so this is our first whoops out of bounds trace repair where we have actually gone off the board. I wonder if I can stab that down the hole. I wonder if I can, wonder if I can. Yeah, I went down a fair way there. It's not bad. Wake up everyone. I feel like the chat's gone a bit quiet. Wake up. I don't know how boring this is, but come on. Wake up. Maybe then put a little wake up. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Tech Gadget, and uh, thank you, Sam Johnson. I appreciate it. Um, I think I'll just what I'll start doing is every now and again I'll just sort of call out, "Hey!" Now I need to run this wire. Here's the issue I have: this wire has to go from here to here and I just don't know what I should do. I mean, do I just run it in a straight line or do I go a bit of an angle like this, have it leave enough wire for it to kind of, I'm gonna do it like this. I might put a little blob of UV mask there just to keep it neat. So. So I will, of course, put a lot more on this, but I just want a little bit on here, just holding it in place. It just, I think it will just make the process a little bit easier later on. This stuff doesn't work very well if you really cake it on thick. Um, what size wire is that, J-Car availability? No, this is stuff that I, I think I actually bought this stuff on E of the Bay. Um, and it is uh, 34 AWG. And the important thing to keep in mind with this wire is that I, it is actually um, uh, enameled wire. It's the sort of wire that you would use on an electromagnet or on a uh, like a motor, you know. Um, and it's um, and the reason why I use enameled wire is because it does have this coating on it. So if you run it. If you're doing what I'm doing here, and you're running it across the board, if it does happen to touch another little pin or something like that, it does have some insulation on it. Um, but that insulation is very easy to remove just with a bit of uh, heat from a soldering iron. So um, I've got a video on my uh, channel. I think it's, you'll find it in the featured videos. It's probably a fair way back now because it's a long time ago. And it's a video that I did on trace repair repairing traces. And in that, I basically go through every, everything that I use in order to do what I'm doing today. So uh, I think you will find links in the description for the wires that I use, but you don't have to use those links. 
they probably don't even work anymore because every time I find someone, I, I go on Amazon and I go, oh yeah, this person's selling the wire. And then like two weeks later, they're not selling it anymore. So um, I'm not even sure that those links are working. But uh, yeah, just mention that um, that video will give you uh, some detail. All right, now we can do this side properly. And not like some sort of crazy amateur like I did last time. And you watch, I'll never be able to get this one as neat as I did before. It's always the way. You get it like all neat, then you go, oh crap, I'm going to have to redo this. And then when you go to redo it, just can't get it as good. You can see how when I just apply some heat to this, the way it's just melting that coating, coating off and then the solder is grabbing it. It's, uh, it's good to use. It's a tip that I, it's not... It's, this isn't stuff that I figured out myself. This is information I learned from uh, Lewis Rossman. Uh, you may not know it, but he used to do repairs uh, before he started making all sorts of commentary about New York politics. Um, and landlords and renting properties and I don't know, whatever else he talks about these days. But yeah, he used to do these uh, repair videos, which I found very, very useful. Um, I did my very first MacBook Pro repair um, um, after I bought a MacBook Pro, a 17 inch one, I think, or it might have been, yeah, 17 inch one. It was an old uh, in, uh, I, uh, Core 2 Duo, Intel Core 2 Duo, 3 gigahertz one. So it was the top spec at the, lot, uh, at the time. It would have been a very expensive laptop when it came out. Uh, and it didn't work. And I got it for really cheap because it didn't work. And I basically just followed steps on. Uh, Rossman's channel, there was a, uh, a tantalum capacitor that needed to be replaced, replaced it, and boom, away she went. So that was good. That kind of got me into the micro soldering side of things, and that's what when I really started uh, getting into that. And then I sort of transitioned that into doing the vintage Mac repairs. Um, I don't know, I suspect it's probably more fun. Uh, not as profitable, that's for sure, but um, the repair of Mac computers being done in people's backyards uh, just went through the roof. Everyone started doing it. And for that reason, it started getting very difficult to find decent computers that were just like straightforward repairs. Um, Link does indeed still work. That is good to hear. Okay, so uh, I have connected up this little trace repair and we were going to, I think it was, was it this one? I think it was this one here on UJ2. And we go... We go, bing, yep, and that was meant to be going to pin seven, I think, there. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yay, so we've got seven working. Now let's go and check that to some of the other places that it goes, and we'll see if we've properly restored that connection, or we've only restored it to uh, one part. So, ooh, where's my preview, there it is, preview, go into preview. And this was pin 7, uh, it's 11 and 14 on due day, two, due day 2. It should be pin 5 on the video ROM. So we go here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And pin 5 on the video ROM. 1, 2, 3, 4. Balls. Balls. So we're going to have to do another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just check that again. Yeah. And five of UK six. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we're stuffed there. Let's see if we can figure some stuff out here. No. 
we've got to patch it onto somewhere. Uh, we'll ideally patch it onto something as, as close as possible. So let's see if we can find out, we'll find a spot. We don't want CPU, FPU maybe, no, does he go to the, no, he doesn't go to the FPU. So what that goes to, he goes to the RAM MUX, he goes to the video ROM, goes to the video MUX, he goes to the sound chip, he goes to the CPU, and he goes to the PDS slot, J13. Oh, God, where's J13? Oh, that's going to be fun to find. But anyhow, uh, let's figure this out. So, um, it's all figurable. It's just boring. I'm sorry. I'm, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, five. So, one, two, three, four, five. So this is basically the problem that I was discussing. Okay, so there's that. We've found it there. Uh, we've got the sound chip. So he'll be up here somewhere. That's probably up here. We have to find, I want to try and find a common connection that'll link all of these together. Um, and I just have to find where it is. That's what it's like with this computer, isn't it? Uh, okay, Video Mux UB8. That's one of these ones. That's the U8 row. All right, let's get over here and we'll keep pinging out and figuring out what's going on. So, uh, UE, UE10, that's UB10, UB11. Uh, where's UE10? UE8, UB10. UB10, oh, UB, is it? Uh, uh, uh. UE10. UE10. Oh, there it is. Okay. So it's one of these ones here. So, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, don't you vex me. UE10. You can see why I don't do much of this in live streams. It does get incredibly dull, doesn't it? Pin two of UE10. So that's one, two. Nope. One, two, three. One, two. Oh, what's going on? Who's, who's, who's this? What? Let's, I'm going to highlight all these because I think I'm getting a bit stuck. There we go. All highlighted. So, I mean, unless there's a mistake on this, it's always possible. One, two, three, four. Uh, pin two. To pin five on the video ROM. Pin two. Oopsie. UE10. UE10. That's what I'll go to the right. So one, two. One, two. That's pin two. So that's definitely not connected there. Hmm. That's a worry. I don't want to be having to run wires everywhere on this thing. <clears throat> Just 
go back to the chat here and make sure that. Uh, do you have a known good board to compare to? The drawings and cheat sheets should be good, but possible there's a typo. Yeah, look, you're right, and I do, I do, I do, uh, right behind me, actually. Uh, there we are. No, we don't. That's an FX. How would you get those two mixed up? Yeah, here it is. I think this is it. Of course, it's right on the bottom. Mm. Alright. This is something I should have actually grabbed right from the word go, of course, because that's what a smart person would do on a hack like me. So we're trying this, we're going to pin five, one, two, three, four, pin five to pin two. Yeah. Okay, so there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with the guide. There's just a lot wrong with the board, the board that I have. Um, okay, so let's just check this. One, two, three, six, seven, seven. And that goes to one, two. Yeah. All right. So the problem that I have here is that we have we have some connections that are still functioning but we have some connections that are not functioning and I just have to figure out the best way well there's some corrosion on this board isn't there <laughs> um, I have to figure out what the story is here so I'm going to flip over onto the other side of this uh, because I've got corrosion up here as well See, there could well be a busted trace underneath this chip. So I think we'd better whip him off. Because look at all the corrosion here on the side. <laughs> it's crap. <laughs> UB40, yes. Red, red, red. It's a good song to sing when you're drunk, isn't it? <clears throat> Not that I would know, because I don't ever drink. I can take this off. No, I'll use a heat shield. Oopsie, soldering on, fall down. So I feel like if I do re establish this connection, I will probably be fine. I think the reason why this sound chip is not getting the ping is because there's just so much corrosion around it, and I suspect there'll be corrosion under it. And so, what we want is pinned two which is this guy here and as you can see there's nothing coming out the front which means it's coming out behind and to in order to see that we kind of have to look underneath it there we go yeah look at it look at where it goes it goes pin two Actually, let's check that. Let's check it with the uh, bippy dippy. You probably won't be able to hear this because of the hot air station going, but there's pin two. And where's it going to one of these? It's going. Okay, so we have continuity from there to there. Let's go through this little hole and find out what we see. Take a photo under the chip and add it to the guide. Yes, I should. Oh, Steve is so good at the concept of kind of archiving and sharing and stuff like that. His brain just goes straight for it every time. Take a photo and share it. Let's get another Rossman of Fluxon. I'll tell you what, you're not going to use some of the flux that I don't like as much for this because I'm going to need so much of it. It's 
Nels. Is this the SC30 logic board? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Fume extractor. Uh, this is the Revision 2 board. I mean, it might be Revision 12 for all we know, but in terms of the ones that got sold, there are, well, there are kind of three distinct revisions, really. There's the first one that has a bodge wire uh, on it, and then a later revision still has the same problem, but they didn't need a bodge wire for it. They sorted it out kind of thing. And then the third one is this one, and this is the one that you can tell this one apart because it's got its... Uh, capacitor, one of the capacitors in a, is in a slightly different position and it has the CPU soldered to the board rather than in a socket and it's grey rather than that gold uh, gold topped CPU that those earlier ones had Yeah, it's not good. <clears throat> so, what can we say about this? One thing we can say, I think without a doubt, is that my obsession with getting SE30s working is a little bit out of hand. I am not a smart man, but I like my SE30. couple of breaks there. Ah, Greg Brody's here, hello there. Possibly this one could be a candidate for a new PCB. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> Yours is in much better shape than this one. Well, lucky you. Yeah. I mean, you know what? If this was any other computer, I'd, I would not be going to these lengths but I have a passion for working on SE30s. It comes down to that. It's sort of, I just, I want to see this one fixed. I don't need another one. I really don't. And I wouldn't go out and, I wouldn't buy one. I mean, unless there was one going for super cheap somewhere, I wouldn't actually go out and buy another SE30. I already have two. Um, but I do love working on them. And of course, it's become so much easier now, thanks to LMNO and his awesome guide. And I realise any one of us could have gone and set up that matrix based on the uh, 
um, the you know sort of the schematic, but he actually did it. They are unique Max. Kind of a weird sort of Mac in many ways. You, you kind of, it, they're amazing that they even got made. It's like, oh, you know, we're going to put like kind of one of the fastest chips we've got at the moment. We're going to plonk it inside this compact Mac. Oh, and we'll also give you the ability to stick 128 um, megs of RAM in there. And oh, we'll give it a processor direct slot as well. So in the future, you can maybe put a process, a uh, accelerator in there, or you can run an external monitor or your network card or whatever the case may be. It's sort of, it's just extraordinary. I mean, it's like... It's kind of a weird sort of thing to make. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to uh, stop doing this cleaning in a moment and start getting back to some work. I mean, I sh probably should not put this chip back on at this stage. Because I think it will be needed, you know, I, I need it off for further diagnosis. Wick is your friend when you're doing a job like this, that's for sure. hear crickets in the background yeah probably now, someone was commenting commenting on that the other day i am so oblivious to it that i don't even notice it but then when someone points it out i'm sort of like mm, crickets oh yeah there are crickets and maybe they're just trying to let me know i'm getting a bit boring i make a funny joke and then i just hear the crickets right i'm going to do exactly what steve told me to do and take a photo of this in its current state. So excuse me, when I get out the old iPhone 12 mini, which has this awesome zoom function, this magnify function, which I love. Yeah, that's not helping. Okay. It does an amazing job of sharpening if you're a little bit wobbly as well. So highly recommend that feature. Save image. There we go. He's saved. All right. So now what we have to figure out is why pin two and this here is not getting to where it should be. So let's have a look. We've got pin two. That one there. It's the one, two, three, fourth one along. Come out of there, solder. It'll just be a lot easier. I might stick a wire through it. That'll make it so that I can find it on the other side easily. Yeah, I can hear the crickets now. Oh, the crickets don't go anywhere near the chickens. If they do, that's it. They're gone. I mean, they probably do go near the chickens, but that's the last we ever see of them. I think this might be a bit crusty on the other side. Let's have a look. So we've got a row of one, two, three, four, four, five, six. Row of six. There it is. I see the row there. I think I did get all the way through. But 
Let's suck up the solder from this side as well. That'll do. All right, let's start playing around a little bit here with the uh, beepity beep me sh machine. Right, pin two, fourth one along. You could be looking at all sorts of chaos going on up here as well. I mean, look at all these. Look at all these little holes here. I bet you it's one of these. I bet you. I bet you. Mm. So let's try and figure out what's going on here. So, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's that one there. Is that just going straight through into the middle of the board? Can't tell because it's the sockets in a way. All right, let's get the working board and let's see if we can find, we might be able to find something there. So this is a good board. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, it's pin five, one, two, three, four, five. We're just gonna ping around here at some of these Oh, look at that. Perfect. Found it. Sing first, second one I tried. How good's that? Is it good or what? So that's this one here. Mmm. Uh, so there's your problem. There's, there's your problem right there. So we're gonna have to do a, we're gonna have to do a great big uh, a great big trace running all the way across the board from that location there to that location there. Doesn't that suck? <laughs> uh, yeah. So we basically have to run, where else does that go? Let's have a look. Oh, we can't really check on this because they're all going to be joined together anyway. Right, now what I need to do here, so I, I need to try and do this with minimal trace repairs. I don't want to be having a run it to every single component on the board. I have to assume that it's still connected in some locations. So, um, um, it's this side, isn't it? Yep. One, two, three, four, five. This is the bad board. So, are we getting a connection to the CPU from here? We are. Oh, uh, that's good. So all I really have to do, we're getting, it's connecting to the CPU, it's connecting to the PDS slot, so all, and it's connecting to the ROM. 
So all I have to do is really re-establish that connection to the sound and that should do us. And that's the one that's all the way across here. Um, it's going to be a long trace wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think we'll probably be done. I think we'll be good to go. So I don't really see another way around it. It's very clear that this is going through the middle of the board. Uh, and the way I can tell that is because it's a via that has no trace on the top and it has no trace on the bottom. So if it has no trace on the top and no trace on the bottom, we know it's going through the middle. <sighs> Everyone having a good time? Hope everyone's having a good time. I mean, I'm making all sorts of noises and everything, but I am ultimately enjoying what I'm doing, so, you know. But this is definitely, I think this is going to end up being the biggest trace repair on the board. I mean, never say never, but, you know. How long have we been going now? Two hours. Okay, I said two hours, didn't I? So I'm going to have to finish soon. And you know how it is. End while the audience is still happy. All right. <laughs> Just stick it all the way over there. It's the best path for that. I've got a little... Uh, well, that way, maybe. And then down into here. Okay. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Isn't it interesting, though? <laughs> we can only hope we can only hope I mean you know you might just be being facetious um, right. once again what I'm going to do with this is just put a little bit of UV mask here just just to make it a little bit easier more importantly when I'm working on this board and flipping it backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards if I've got wires that are too dangly I can end up um, uh, damaging them by accident so I'm just going to do a few little points where the wire is kind of stuck to the board. Watching you work while I work. This is, I actually, this is one of the things I do like about live streams, you know, and watching other people's live streams. Is, you know, it's the kind of work where you don't necessarily have to sit there and hang on every word and you drift in and out. You might do your own thing and stuff like that. And so you can kind of just have a live stream going in the background and you eh, take it easy and do your thing. Come back, paintbrush. Six more hours. Yeah, so when I do actually have a full-time day job, and I have a meeting at four o'clock and I would like to have got a little bit more done than I have before I have that meeting. I'm working on something which is just unbelievably boring and tedious. Uh, it's documenting stuff.
<laughs> oh, that's too much. I built this software ages ago and it's growing to a point now where we need other people to be able to know how it works, uh, how the, all the back, background stuff works. So I have got to write technical documentation so that we can hand it to other developers so that they can do other work on it as well. Uh, for years it's just been me only working on it, so it's, it hasn't mattered. It's like, yeah, whatever. I'm the only one that uses it, so I don't need to explain anything to anyone. But now we're actually having to bring in external developers. I've got to go in and actually write stuff. Write technical documentation. Explain how everything works, why it works the way it does. And that is just taking me an age to do. The code is the document, yeah. <laughs> Not sure they'll uh, go with that. Especially being someone who... And he generally writes remarks when he feels like it. At least you know it's quality documentation. Oh, indeed. The best. <laughs> I don't think I've got any profanities in my code. I do say some silly things in them sometimes. Things like, I hope this works. Oh, we're making our way across the board. Snaking our way across the board. I'm going to take it to about there, I think. I think that's a good place to change angle. When I, uh, when, when, if I get this working and finished, uh, I will put UV mask across the whole wire and I'll set it out probably out in the sun. That's usually the easiest way to cure uh, UV mask, uh, large amounts of it. The sun obviously being a very large UV light uh, does cure this stuff very quickly. But I'm just doing these little blobs for the moment. As I say, just more, more than anything, just to protect these wires so they don't come loose and get caught on things and things and such and stuff and things. Swear word variable names. Yeah, now, I can't say I've ever done that. I'm just not creative enough. Well, the funny thing is that this system that I built, um, we ended up with a big customer, really big customer, that came to us with all these specific requirements. So this is meant to be like a system that's, that serves multiple companies. It's a single system that works for, for lots of companies. And we had this one customer, oh, poo, big customer. And they, uh, they had all of these, you know, custom requests. And so we, you know, tried to help out as much as we could. This stuff wasn't used by anyone else, just them. And we ended up writing all this code and then eventually they, they had a management change there. And the moment the new manager came in, they said, no, we're not using them anymore. We're gonna use this company. And so that was it, we're, they, were, they were gone. And now we've got this code or this system riddled with all this custom stuff that we made for them that's never ever gonna be used again. That's kind of frustrating, I will say. Hmm. 
when you're a small company, in particular like a startup, it's very difficult sometimes to kind of see things like that when you're doing, you sort of think, you know what, this might be a bad idea. We should just build this system for as many people as possible. We can put, you know, whatever customizations in we want. But we were just, we were bending over backwards for these guys, putting in all this customization. And when you look at it now, you sort of think, that was a stupid thing to do. <sighs> but we live and learn. I mean, I never forget when I started up my own business uh, in the early days, I got this really big project from a client. And I realized very, very soon afterwards that you need to be very selective about what you take on when you're a certain size. It might be very tempting to look at that and go, oh my God, look at the size of this project. This project is huge. Um, this is going to be so good for me. But sometimes it's not so good for you. Sometimes you end up in a situation where, like for instance, in this particular customer, uh, there was never any uh, proper statement of works written, written up. Now, I would never do that. I would now. I would never ever take on a project without absolutely immaculately clear specifications about exactly what they are getting. Um, in this one. It was all very fuzzy. Oh, we wanted to do this, and we wanted to do that, and, when, you know, we're getting in there writing code, and they're like, oh, I thought it would be able to do this, and, oh, I mean, you know. And, of course, I ended up writing this big chunk of code for Flash, which, of course, stopped getting used, so it all ended up being a waste anyway. Put a piece of uh, Captain Tape down over the bodge wires to no. Um, are you mean temp just temporarily or do you mean after the work is done? Um, in terms of uh, temporarily, I'm hoping it won't be necessary. Um, and in terms of long term, definitely not. I will, uh, uh, it will just be UV mask, mask all the way. It's all ball bearings these days. We're nearly there, folks. Snaking our way across the board here. Better make sure I attach it to the right one. I'll feel a wally if I don't. This is incredibly neat. I'm very proud of myself. I think I might need a new paintbrush soon. This one is in a terrible state. I bought three when I bought this one. Who knows where the other two are? Said I wasn't going to put much down. Look how much I put down. Just went out of hand. It's, um, yeah, it's not fingernail polish. It does behave very, very different to fingernail polish. 
Um, I do actually have this stuff, this conformal coating that I bought, and I swear it is just fingernail polish. I've got three different types of coating that I use. I've got a clear conformal coating, and that one you can just dry by baking it in an oven. Then I've got uh, fingernail polish, uh, which works as quite a good conformal coating as well. Uh, the, and that one there, you just obviously got to wait for it to cure. Uh, the main reason why we use this UV solder mask is the fact that you can cure it with a, um, uh, a, a um, what do you call this thing, UV light, because that just makes it quicker and easier. So, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So we are going to connect him to this guy. Oh, piss off. There we go. All right. So now I should be able to just stretch this down a little bit. Yeah, it's like that. That's good. That's good. That'll do. So. Well, I hope I've got the right one. It's number five. So it should be. So now, in theory, if everything has gone well and gone to plan, I should be able to, see, I'm not even sure that I have completely resolved this. I've resolved part of it, but I've resolved. So it's pin seven on the, and I think I still need to do another one to go from here, oopsie, from here to there. Uh, pin seven. Uh, yeah, pin seven. So, uh, he should, if I just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's pin seven. Now he is still not connecting to one, two, three, four, to there. Yeah, so I've still got one more to do, but pin five should now be connecting. I'll turn the friggin' thing on. Okay, so let's go from there. To there, but then we don't have one, two, three, four, seven. Yep, so we still don't have a connection from um, so yeah, we, we need to run a connection from this wire here up to that wire there. Um, and I'm just thinking about what's the best way to do that. Do I patch it in here? Or do I run it from the pin? Hmm. Well, certainly it's closer to do it this way. So, we need to get this guy. What a lot of work for one friggin' trace, eh? Or one pin, anyway. One pin on the ROM swap. Ow! Right, so that there now needs to run down here. Is it fixed yet? No, 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 no. But I will be finishing very soon because good to grief. Good to grief. But do expect um, more of the same. Uh, I will be doing future live streams on this same computer as we work our way through the problem. Let's work the problem, people. Let's not make things worse by guessing. Oh, thank you very much, Steve.
Busy Can't Watch came to like the stream. Uh, have a good one. Thank you very much, Thomas B. Much appreciated. It's one of these little V, one of these V's here. I think it might be that one. Whoops, you can't see my nail. God, my nail's nearly cut, don't I? That one there. I'm pretty sure it's that one there that, that is, is the one that would have made this connection. Um, I can actually almost see like a little piece of copper sneaking out there. So I wonder if I was to just fill that hole with solder, whether I would be able to restore a connection. I wouldn't feel terribly confident about that connection. That's for sure. Always fun watching your work. Well, thank you. <laughs> Got the precision of a surgeon. Well, thank you for saying so. Uh, I think it's more of the patience of a saint when doing something like this. <laughs> oh, dear. But as I, as I keep saying, it's an SE30. Come on. It's worth it. Sorry about the focus here. A bit out of focus. It is one of the things I plan to fix this weekend. Oh, I've got a super chat. Hello, oh, and it's a big $10. Thank you very much for that. Very much appreciated. Uh, Abenosa, thank you. Bedtime. There we go. Thanks for the cool stream. You're most welcome. Thank you for joining in. I do apologize if this is a little bit boring compared to some of the other ones I do. And of course, there is no closure with this one today because there's so much work to be done. Um, but if I do get this one fixed, it'll be fun. I mean, look at all the, you just keep seeing all these rotten uh, vias and just thinking every single one of those is going to be a trace wire. Hmm. <laughs> More entertaining than Dr. Pimple Popper. I cannot watch that. I know a lot of people that just get addicted to it, but I cannot watch that. I've no aversion to popping my own pimples, but I have no interest in watching other people's pimples be popped. So that's a big no from me on those. I keep getting the Bob, Ro Bob Ross reference. This is, this is. People keep calling me Bob Ross. Bob Ross of computers. Or computer repair or recapping or whatever. Okay. And we're going to patch this in here. I'm, just, I'm essentially just joining it to the existing wire here, but I just want to join it with, you know, a reasonable amount of wire there. So, there we go. That's a join. Safe as houses. How about a last lifetime? It is lifetime, though. I was going to say Jerry Springer's, but that's a bit too soon, isn't it? I'm just going to uh, put a big blob of solder here on the other side. Just to enhance the drawing. Nice big glob of solar there. 
Wow, this board's already looking exciting. I'll show you from uh, the top a little bit later on, but yeah, we are definitely, we're, uh, we're making a fun looking board here. So now it comes down to the part where we can hopefully just check and see that we're getting, uh, we're getting through. So we go along here to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's pin seven. And it should be connecting to, yep, okay. We've got a couple of, couple here that are beeping. We should be at pin five on this guy. One, two, three, four, five, got that. Should be pin two on the sound chip, got that. And there's also some stuff on the CPU which I have to check from the other side. So if we go here to the other side, excuse me, and we go to pin seven, and we know we're along here somewhere. There we go, there, and we're along here somewhere too. There we go, and we're connected to the CPU as well. So that is a successful connection. And the trace wire, which is probably a little bit difficult for you to see, but the trace wire goes from here, it runs along here, down here, across here, up onto that pin. And then down here, a little diagonal there, and a bit of little zigzag into there, which goes onto the other side to the uh, chip. Uh, and then a little, little wire goes along to there. So that's our happy little wire. Uh, all, right. all right. I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to call it a, call it a day. If it's going to be one like that, I'm not going to do one more. But if it's going to be an easier one more, I'm going to do one more, and then I'm out of here. So, what did we just do? We just did, what did you do? We just did this one here. This is the fourth one along. There. This one looks intact. This one looks intact. But let's just get rid of that fluff. Let's just check. So, this one goes to... That's pin eight. It's nice they're sequential like that, isn't it? So pin eight needs to go to pin four of the video ROM. So eight, pin four. Yay, that one's still connected. So we're good there. Um, and it goes to pin one of that sound chip, which is there. Don't. Well, pin one might be broken up here. Let's figure that out first. Pin one. Oh, I lost it again. Pin one. Oh, I lost it again. It's the third one up. Third one up. It goes to there. So pin one. That's it there. And then he goes through onto the other side there to something. God, we're not going to have to do that, are we? Don't want to have to do that. Pin four, pin one. Spasmo. Okay. At least it's only one, I think, trace repair we're going to have to do, not like three we did with the others. So that is pin four. He's going to be one of these. Yeah, there he is. It's that second one along. So... <clears throat> that is this one by the looks of it. It's going on the other side of that. One to the left of that one. It's this one here. See, he looks, he looks pretty solidly intact, doesn't he? That's that guy there. Hmm. So, 
So I kind of now need to run a trace from like one of these, like that one, I think, down to this one. I really don't want to do that. be another way there must be another way there must be some hole broken somewhere and if I can just join to that one so pin one I don't want to do this I don't want to do this. You probably don't want me to do this either. What's going on here? What's going on? All right, okay, come on. Uh, do you want to do documentation more? Yeah, well, documentation has to be done. Third one along. Third one along. So that's third from the left, so it'll be third from the right when I flip the board over. That's this one. One, two, three. Third one along. So here, third one along. That's this one. Third one along. Should go to pin four. And it doesn't. So what is what is going on here? Pin one. Pin four. Oh, hang on. All right, I'm gonna recheck my uh, recheck my stats here. So it was pin eight. Oh, pin three, not pin one. How did I manage that? Pin three of the sound chip. One, two, three. Okay. Well, we might be we might be better off because I was pinging pinging the wrong thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight goes to here, and pin three. Yay! We're all good. So that one's fine. That one's fine. That's this one here. Um, so let's look for another broken one. There's a nice looking broken one. Oh, got fluff. I don't even know where this one goes. Where's he going? And there, and there, and there, and there. Okay, cool. So this is just a straightforward trace repair. I don't think I even need to go through to the other side of the board for this one, because it's not a veer. It's just a trace along there. All right, we'll do that. We'll do that, and then we'll call it a day. We'll call it an afternoon anyway. Hello, Jay from the House of Moth. How are you today? Are you waving hello or are you waving goodbye? I mean, I haven't heard from you in a while, so you may be waving hello. Um, 
but you were here at the beginning, so you may be waving goodbye. Oh, computer went punk. Oh, that's why the keyboard's up there. I'm bumping the keyboard. Jeremy is here. Hello there, Jeremy. And you might have actually just been waving to Jeremy. I don't know. Right, now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out if this is connected to the ROM slot, which it probably is, so then we can probably check it out. So let's go to that one there. Let's go running up the board. There we go. Which one is it? Okay, so that is 10, 20, 30, 39. So let's just check that. Uh, 39 goes to the CPU and it goes to the PDS slot and to the glue chip. Glue chip. 39 goes to 41 of the glue chip. Where's our glue chip? There it is. So let's just check that and see that that is connected before we go in and do all this work. Um, I don't know where it is on the glue chip. I'll just hit and hope. There it is. Yep, good. So we've got a connection to the glue chip, so I don't need to run this trace any further than the break that we actually just see here. Fairly straightforward. Piss off. There we go. I'm just feeding this through to the other side. Doesn't need to go far. And then, let's get some flux. Back to the chat. Yeah, um, hello to Corey, Corey's art. I think it's assumed it's meant to be Corey's art. I am fairly specific about what I work on. Um, I can uh, probably fix what you describe. Um, but uh, one of the big issues with this is, I mean, well, you think about it like what I'm doing now. What I'm working on at the moment is a computer and it's mine. And I can spend as much time as I want on this because it's mine. It's my, you know, I can spend my days, nights, weekends, whatever I want, because it's mine. If I start doing this with someone else, I'm obviously going to want to charge for it. And then you just sort of have to think to yourself, well, okay, well, how long is it going to take? Well, for four hours, let's say. And this one here is going to take me more than four hours. I can say that for just straight off the bat. But let's just say, for argument's sake, it's going to take me four hours to repair the amp. And you go, okay, well, we're going to have to put an hourly rate on the work that is being done there. Um, so what's that hourly rate going to be? Um, now I don't know what rates are in your part of the world, but over here, if I was to say, put a fairly I think modest hourly rate on work like this, probably be looking at 80 bucks. I'd be charging more, but let's say 80 bucks an hour. So then that's four hours, that's $320. You then got to think to yourself, 320 bucks, man. You can buy an amp for that. So it's sort of, um, it's not even necessarily about being able to do it. It's then also about, is it going to be worth it? I mean, if it's something that's like really rare and worth spending the money on, then sure. But, you know. But 
That's the question that has to be asked. Right. Boop, boop. One thing I really like about this new microscope arm that I'm using, it's really light to move it from side to side. I just do it with my nose. The uh, AM scope is a lot heavier and sometimes hurt my nose. This is not the neatest trace repair I've ever done. I just want to say that straight off the bat, this one is very wobbly. I generally try and keep these lines straight, and they are not straight. I mean, I try and get them to follow the contour of the original line. Oh, I just realized most of what I was doing there wasn't on camera, so I apologize. So let's see if we, I'm just gonna cut this here, like that. And let's see if we're making a connection now. So what did I say, it was 39, I think. Pin 39, 10, 20, 39, 39. He switched himself off again. There's a beep, and let's go to there. Yay! Okay, that's another trace repair done. So, okay, around about this time, I think what we're gonna to have to do is start wrapping things up. So I'm gonna change over here to the top view very quickly. I'll do a little bit of a zoom in on this camera so we can get a better view of what's actually occurred here. So as you can see here, as I mentioned before, we've got lots of components missing. I have replacements for most of them, but not all. So I'm gonna to have to reply buy new ones of these. I'm gonna to have to buy new ones of these R, these resistor nets, RP7, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, I think is it? Yeah, no, so four, seven, eight, nine. I need to buy replacements of those. And this LS, uh, LS30, I have everything else. So I have the real-time clock chip, I have the, um, the uh, oscillator, I have the caps, I have these, um, uh, RAM MUX chips. I have these chips up here. I have those. That one, of course, I just took off today. Where do you think I put it? Here. I'm going to need to make a little container for all the bits I take off this because I'm not going to put that back on until we've got all of these traces repaired. Um, so, and then of course, I've got a mountain of trace repair work to do here. Um, you can see some of the ones that I've done here. The big problem we have with these is there are data and address lines inside the board and we've got breaks to those so we're going to end up having to um, do lots of little snaky little trace repairs um, like I did with this one here you can see this one snaking across the board there so that one's going along there travel 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 there's a little, little dog leg there uh, Another little dog leg that's connected to pin five of that uh, ROM, uh, sorry, the video ROM. Down here, down there, down there, down there, down there, and here. And it actually goes through onto the other side of the board through this hole there. It gets joined here to pin seven of the ROM chip. That's him going through the middle there. And if we go to the other side, that's him coming up here. That's where you see a little bit of fat, bit of solder there, it's a big fat thing. Um, so yeah, so that's it. Um, and as I say, this is part one. I intend to do future live streams as I work on this. I won't necessarily work on this all the time because I do have other people's boards to do, but, uh, today I was struggling a little bit with, uh, what I should work on because most of the other things I have to work on at the moment are very, even more boring than this. So, um, yeah. Um, I, the next one I do, I might end up doing the uh, two FX. I'll get it, I've got to get all the paperwork together for that because I need the schematic. So I've got to get all the paperwork together, and maybe even map out a little matrix very similar to what has been done uh, by LMNO in this guide. 
But uh, that's the first stage, and I guess I'm, I'm probably feeling a little bit more positive about this than I was when I sat down this morning before I started doing a live stream. I grabbed this board and I just looked at it and I went, oh, God, I'm not sure I should stream this. But I am definitely feeling better about it now. I feel like this is just going to be systematic, working through one at a time, um, finding all these little holes and stuff and fixing them. So, wonderful stuff. And this also was a uh, mentioned a test to see how my new uh, M1 Mac Mac Mini, which is actually second hand, but how it would perform doing my live stream. And I have to say it has performed incredibly well in terms of the amount of CPU that it uses compared to the old computer that I had running in this. So I'm very, very pleased about that. It's all good. I'm going to sort out my picture a little bit. It seems a little bit dark. But anyhow, we'll uh, see if we can resolve that. Um, let's try this. It's getting a little bit brighter there. Just a little bit brighter now. Just got to wait. I, I have to get the shutter speed in sync with my, um, um, with my fluorescent lights. Oh, see, now I'm getting a lower frame rate because of the brightness. Yeah, okay. We'll have to go back to the way it was before. Sorry, everyone. All right. There we go. Yeah, better, better, better. Still dark though, but what are you gonna do? Um, I just need better lighting in here is what I need. Ah, Steve, thank you very much for saying that. Great work so far, he said. Oh, I do appreciate that. It makes it feel like it's worthwhile because I'm really doubting that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I like hearing the cricket. <laughs> It's the middle of the day. Why are you doing that? It must be in here. That's, that's all I can think. It stopped when I yelled at it. Oh no, it starts up again. Shush. 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 <laughs> oh, silly cricket. I might have to see if I can find him and move him because he is not doing the best for my audio of my live stream. Live stream. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you for keeping me uh, entertained in the chat. Um, thanks for uh, being part of this journey. It's going to be this computer. Um, I will, um, I'll, posts will be, um, I'll, I'll be sending, you know, sort of, uh, uh, I'll, notifications will be going out as I keep going on this one. So look forward to part two and part three and who knows how many parts. Uh, in the meantime, I'll see how I go uh, sourcing these remaining uh, lost components. Um, so thanks again, and thank you for the super chats. Much appreciated. Always, always big thanks, everyone. Please uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Much appreciated. And I will uh, see you... I, when I press this button, it may not work because I've had to transfer everything across from another computer. We might end up getting some weird stuff happening here, but we'll give it a try. We'll give it a try. So thank you everyone, and I'll see you next time, hopefully. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.